Welcome back to the channel. I am Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, and after a very short delay, what some have been calling the Starfield Mega Patch has now just entered beta test. It's fairly easy to install over on Steam. Just select properties and then find the betas icon and the drop down for this latest beta, which by the way is 11.5 gigs in size. From there, it's going to auto download and install, and you're in. And I've now had a chance to get in a little hands-on time with this new build and look over the mountain load of changes. And there's just a lot here to digest. So if you haven't yet done so, consider hitting subscribe as well as ringing the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. Likes, comments, shares are of course always appreciated. Chapters are up and in place to assist you in finding specific areas of this video. And before we dive into the full breakdown, here's a quick word from today's sponsor. Everything is expensive these days, and we all demand durability and versatility. And that's where Raycon comes in, offering up products as high tech as they are affordable. I myself have been using their everyday earbuds on the go, at the gym, taking lengthy conference calls, and even just relaxing with some tunes. And I really appreciate their perfect in-ear fit and overall well-balanced ergonomics. Not only are these earbuds comfortable, but they stay in place, not budging, even under extreme physical exercise. And they're sweat and water resistant, making them ideal for use at the gym. You'll also appreciate the whopping 8 hours of playtime and 32 hour battery life, which now also includes wireless charging in the case, along with premium features such as multiple sound profiles, awareness mode, and they also come in a variety of cool looking colors. These earbuds offer up a ton of convenient functionalities with the buttons on each side allowing for a wide variety of media control and smartphone functions. No wonder they have tens of thousands of 5 star reviews. Get premium audio that looks, feels and sounds better at half the price of other premium audio brands by visiting buyraycon that's b u y r a y c o n dot com forward slash l t buzz for fifteen percent off your order site wide plus free shipping and thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Starfield update one point nine point forty seven point zero is now live on the Steam beta where it's going to be ironed out and it should go live in a couple of weeks. So before I get that inevitable question, is it live yet for console? No, not today. Now the bulk of this update I will speak on a little later in this video is that will involve the quest and random encounters bug fixes, but for general fixes, the rather bothersome bug where crew and companions would all crowd up around the bridge hatch and cockpit after fast traveling to your ship has apparently been sorted out. So now you can get in and out of that area without testing out your rugby skills. Another mildly disturbing fix has to do with player characters in third person view and how their eyes would remain shut like all the time. And thanks to Bethesda, we can now blink. And one fix that I am also grateful for, invisible creatures on certain planets are now showing up. As there were times I would be standing planet side, reviewing my map or something of the sort, and I would just start taking damage out of nowhere from an unknown source. I could hear the creatures making noises, I just couldn't see them. General stability and save game issues also received a pretty hefty pass as well, as the issue with Windows users not being able to save their game if the username featured certain characters is now solved. Save game corruptions on both Microsoft Store and Steam has also been addressed, as well as added optimizations to cloud syncing of save games for both Microsoft Store and Xbox. Improved crowd behaviors have been added for various scenarios, along with various stability improvements. And overall, at least for me on PC, stability was really improved with that patch that included DLSS implementation for NVIDIA GPU owners. Ever since then, my game has been steadily hitting 80 FPS or higher on full ultra, everything pegged to the limits, playing in full 4K. Which is a perfect transition to graphics improvements, and this is an area of the game that could look downright rough in certain areas, especially environmental textures and non-essential NPCs. So overall, I count 40 individual graphic improvements listed in the patch, starting off with improved widescreen support for 32 by 9, 21 by 9, and 16 by 10 resolutions. Work was done to add on shadows from planet rings in orbit down to the planet surfaces, as well as character skin on Xbox and PC 
medium, high, and ultra settings. Now this was shown off in tweets by Bethesda demonstrating before and after shots so that character skin no longer looks highly reflective and it actually looks way more realistic. Flicking fixes. Yeah, say that three times very fast in a row. <laughs> We're repeatedly mentioned in this change log, like environmental VFX fixes to sandstorms, acid liquid pools and waterfalls. Also various shadow popping, hair, and even in space flicking, especially for you Series S users. Work was also performed to remove various FSR2 and DLSS artifacts such as noise, black dots, and ghosting, along with various geometry, textures, ghosting issues, and improved lighting effects were installed at 73 locations. Outpost also made the change log, and besides various rare bug issue fixes, one item that has plagued my Outpost experience has been with cargo links, and let's just get brutally honest here, those things have been seriously fucked up since the game launched. You have all the outposts correctly built, they have helium-3, you have the cargo in the outgoing or incoming box, and for some reason, the link cannot be established on the cargo link terminal. It just doesn't show up, or if it shows up, it just can't be enabled. I've tried demolishing the landing pads, rebuilding them, I mean, everything and anything, but they are here in the patch notes, and I'm going to be watching those changes closely during my time with this beta. Before we move on to the major section of the fixes, let's talk about a couple of other noteworthy areas. First off, FOV and zoom issues have been addressed with weapon scopes. You also have a few skill tweaks. Phase time and the solar flare power have also been fixed. Asteroids following your ship apparently fixed again, hopefully forever. And quite a number of issues with ships, like ship hatches being marked inaccessible, ship building, ship targeting, and various other rare occurrences. All right, now on to the main event, quest and random encounter fixes, and there are 35 in total. Now, many of these are labeled as rare occurrences or possible control lock issues if a specific order of actions were performed. Here's the entire list scrolling across your screens and check in the video description for a link to the full patch notes. But the Crimson Fleet Eye of the Storm quest shows up several times. And I know that has been a point of issue for many players out there, especially concerning the data transfer, not starting after placing the data core and issues docking with the legacy while attempting to reload a save before starting that mission. But let's get brutally honest again. For many Starfield players, what's missing is all the stuff they really want, many of which were teased back in December when Bethesda made their future plans for Starfield public. Changes like new ways to travel, especially planet side, city maps, expanded ship customization options, gameplay options that would allow players to expand just beyond difficulty levels. Things like carry capacity, cargo access range, ship damage, vendor credits, afflictions, new survival mechanics, and a whole lot more. You know, official mod support would have been a great shadow drop for this update as console players are eager to try it out. And sadly, there's nothing here about those. Or even a performance mode for Series X because I do read your comments and I've watched the video from Digital Foundry applauding the previous performance patches and theorizing that a 60 FPS mode for X is definitely obtainable. And finally, there's nothing here about fast travel and or all those loading screens, new handcrafted areas versus what we have, which is procedurally generated and repeated encounters, or, you know, even ways in which to make space travel more immersive. But there it all is. Leave me any questions and I will do my best to respond. Remember to hit subscribe and ring the notifications bell. Likes, comments, shares are always welcome. All my socials can be found in the video description. We are nearly to 189,000 subscribers, and I thank each and every one of you that have stuck with me over the years. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.